Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I have a topic in mind that might be useful to you or might not. It really depends on the kind of developer you are. I've seen a lot of people using Visual Studio Code instead of Visual Studio or even Writer to do C-sharp development. When using Visual Studio Code for C-sharp development, a lot of things that you might be used to using your mouse and menus to get to are now not in Visual Studio Code even with the C-sharp dev kit. There's an expectation with VS Code that you're going to end up using the console more and sometimes even the command palette to do the same things you're used to doing in other IDEs. Let's talk about it. So I've got a really simple C-sharp project here. I could have created it with the console. That's certainly something you can do with .NET New, but there's so much out there on .NET New. I don't want to really focus on that. I want to focus on as you're working with a project. I'm actually going to start away from a project and talk about the SDKs. So .NET, I find the easiest way to list the SDKs I have on my machine. And this can be important when I'm thinking about, oh, I have an older project or I have a newer project or I want to convert a project from one version to another, knowing which SDKs I have on my machine. You can see I have ones going all the way back to version 5 on my machine. And I can certainly get rid of some of these as time goes on. 5 is probably pretty much gone because it was supported for a shorter amount of time. You can also look at what runtimes you have. Now, this is going to be a bit bigger because you're going to see different things like the ESP.NET Core runtimes, the .NET Core app, which this is when you're needing to run things, console apps and things that don't need the ASP.NET Core, and the Windows desktop app, which I happen to have installed so that I can do .NET Core, WPF, and things like that. These aren't everyday things you're going to be using, but I find them useful to know that the CLI is capable of it. But let's get into something more interesting. I have this small program here. It's not doing anything really yet, but I know I want to create some fake data. So I might want to add package, right? It's going to allow me to add any NuGet package. I can also remove them in this way. But let's say you want to include something like YARP, but you didn't really know what version you wanted to deal with. So far, .NET doesn't have a way to search any of the NuGet packages, but luckily, depending on what machine you're on, you can use NuGet to list the different versions of a package if you know. And you can see here I'm getting pretty much anything that's related to YARP, but I can see here the yarp.reverseproxy, which is the Microsoft project, is really the one I want. And so then I can .NET add that package, and I can include a version or not. I could also say pre-release if I want to get the latest pre-release version. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to go ahead and add it. It does its little dance. Notice no pop-ups to accept the licenses. It's implicit that using the CLI, you're going to agree to any of those licenses. And if we look at our csproj file, you can see it doing exactly what you would think. Back in the old days of .NET Core, they used to have IntelliSense for the package references. And I used to write them in by hand because they had some IntelliSense for it. They've taken that out because it was a little bit too resource intensive. And they don't want people hand editing the csproj as much as I think they probably should allow it. So let's do the same thing again. In this case, I'm going to use NuGet to search for, let's say, Mapster, which is a tool I'll use quite a bit. We can see it's found a bunch of different Mapster projects. And here's Mapster. And it doesn't tell me what versions are out there that aren't the latest, but I know that once I have the name, I can .NET add package Mapster pre-release. So if there is a pre-release version you want to be working with, you can actually get that. And let's see if there was. It did find a pre-release version, so I went ahead and installed it. Remember, you can use specific versions or just get the latest or the latest pre-release version. Those are both supported. And let's say I decided that I no longer needed Mapster. I can also do .NET remove package Mapster. And unsurprisingly, it just deletes the line. But you can see some ways you can use the CLI, both for automation, but also so you can get comfortable with it being quicker. One of the reasons I like Add Package so much is it's so unbelievably quicker than opening up that awful dialogue in Visual Studio. I actually use the CLI in Visual Studio to do this as well. They don't really like it, and sometimes I get some conflict with CSProj because they think someone tried to overwrite it, which it did. So it's much easier here in Visual Studio. So there's some other things we can be doing. We all know that there are some tools like EF, there are extensions to the .NET CLI that allows you to do these things. We can match those by, so if I go tool, 
list. Now this could list tools in my local project, which there are none, but if I do dash G, it'll show me all the ones I've installed globally like Entity Framework. And so you can see I have a few here that are interesting, .NET search, .NET outdated tool, etc. And these can be installed or uninstalled. So I'm going to remove it. And then of course, I'm going to show you that we can go ahead and add it as well. It's not as good of a discovery method for these, but the .NET outdated tool is one that I find really, really interesting. The next thing is when I have a project that I need to update all of the packages, I can also do that from the command line. It uses a package called outdated, the one I actually just added, and this will list any package that needs to be outdated. So let's go to ASP NetVeet after we can see that is a regular project and I'll say .NET outdated. And we can see the big change they want is for the spa services to update it. Now you can see that it's giving you different colors for different requirements. So major version updated or pre-release version is now a major release, those sorts of things. But this doesn't actually update them on their own. What we have to do is add the dash U. This is going to go through and upgrade all the packages that it says need to be updated. There are some flags for only updating greens versus reds versus yellows. But in a lot of my projects, I just do the dash U and let it go to town to get me all the latest versions. This isn't going to update your project from, let's say, .NET 7 to .NET 8, but it will bring the latest versions of those different packages. There's actually a clever little tool out there that will take projects that have different formatting in them and actually allow you to do .NET format. And we'll go ahead and format your project. You can also decide what kind of formatting you want, like white space only, or actually run analyzers as well. And this can be useful when you want to make sure, let's say, before a big check-in that you don't have any inconsistencies in your formatting. This does depend on the standard rules of formatting that it can use the editor config as well. If you have special rules you want to inform for the formatting, those will all work as well. I don't have one in this project, but it would be useful if I did. And the last one I want to talk about are workloads. Workloads? What are workloads? Let's go ahead and show you what I have for workload list. This might not be really obvious, but these are different parts of the .NET runtime that can be installed or not installed. And so I actually have workloads because of the way I installed Visual Studio originally for Android and iOS and Mac Catalyst and MAUI. This is all really MAUI related. So I can actually search for workloads as well. And this will show you all the available workloads that are out there. And a lot of them are MAUI based or WASM based. You can even see oddly still a TVOS workload out there. But for me, I really want this Aspire one, right? Notice it's in preview. And so if I do .NET workload install Aspire, it's going to show it's already installed. But if I want to update all the workloads, I can do .NET workload update. That's going to go through all of our workloads that might have updates. And you can see on the bottom it said it successfully updated our workload. You also see this little warning because I have a pending reboot and I always delay it as long as I can. The story I'd like you to take with you from this is that while I wasn't exhaustive about the different .NET CLI tools that you could be using, you could also be using Azure and GitHub CLI tools as well, that working with Visual Studio Code brings me back to a day where I was using an IDE less for doing all these machinations and getting back to doing things as quickly as I could. And the .NET CLI really allows me to do most of the things that I would normally need to do right-clicking and open through menus and things in Visual Studio. That's sort of our pain as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully you've seen some of the things that the CLI can do and might decide that learning the CLI is really worth it, because I think it is. If you've gotten this far, please like and subscribe. I have a bunch of Aspire content coming up in the next several weeks. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified about those new videos. Down in the comments, feel free to ask me any questions about this or if you have suggestions for other topics. And the video could always use a like. I know you hear this from every YouTube creator, but likes mean a lot to getting people to see our content. So any of that would be a big help. This has been Sean Wilding with for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time.